Hi, this is Julian for Production Expert with a quick video looking at wave shapers. Uh, this is part of a larger article on Production Expert, so pop over there and check that out. But if you're more used to more traditional mixing tools like EQs and compressors and stuff like that, you might look at this wave shaping plugin and think that what you're looking at is a compressor. And it's, it shares elements with that, but it's fundamentally different. It has a transfer curve of sorts. This is what's referred to as a stateless transfer function. All it means is that it takes an input and imposes this shape onto each cycle of the resulting waveform, hence the name wave shaper. These are way more common for uh, synthesists are very into this kind of stuff. And uh, and this kind of has a history in, in development and people who deal with stuff under the hood, as it were, uh, in developing plugins and the like. But it can be useful because while it can make some really extreme sounds, it doesn't have to. And uh, if you want to make, say, saturation, just regular saturation, you can do it in a wave shaper. That's a subset of wave shaping, but you, this gives you arbitrary control and you can do anything you want. Let's put a test tone through it. Here we've got a sawtooth wave. And you might think this diagonal and this diagonal are kind of related. And in this example, they sort of are, but not really. If I grab this output, we've got input plotted against output. If I bring the output level down, we'll see we're controlling the level in some way. And uh, if I add a node, let's add a node down here and uh, do something like this. What we see is we chop the top of the wave off as input rises and this input of each cycle of the waveform, it gets chopped off at this level. And here we see kind of clipping, sort of. Might be easier to understand if we have a look at, uh, look at a sine wave. And here's our regular clipping. Uh, if we then uh, impose something else onto it, if we bring this up and soften that out a little we'll start to see something that looks maybe a little more like regular regular saturation as we'd understand it but very odd stuff starts to happen if you start to mess around with this end <laughs> for example look we start to get some lots and lots of extra harmonics and as we turn up we get something that kind of looks a bit like a batman square wave or something there's some very very crazy stuff that you can do in here okay that's all very well with test tones which does help you understand how these two things are connected. But if we come over here, we'll have a look at a different instance of wall shaper and we'll put a little bit of a uh, little bit of drums through it. And here we're passing some drums, okay. And then if I do what I did before and I introduce a little clipping, what we're gonna see is we're gonna see additional harmonic content being brought in. Uh, we can change it radically if we want to. And, and on a complex signal, it, it's it's kind of, well, obviously it gets more complicated. That's really kind of what I'm saying. What you will find on tonal stuff, and this is drums, it's not the best example for showing that off particularly, but you heard all the harmonics being introduced. Oversampling is kind of important if you want to shape the sound the way you want it to. And uh, also, don't forget about the, uh, the influence of filters, both on the input and on the output, to alter these extra harmonics you're introducing but if you want crazy wild stuff there we are and just start making arbitrary stuff that's messing with your uh, with your wave as it comes through this wave shape and you can end up with some really really chaotic mungy grungy stuff but as i just demonstrated it can do subtle stuff too and if you want a little bit of uh, extra control over milder effects like saturation or something or just plain old clipping you can get them using a wave shaper.